G'day guys, welcome back to Mark Super. Today we're going to be making a start on the 5-axis Optimum MH28V CNC conversion. You can see where it currently stands and in this video we're going to be showing you the process of getting this stand welded, the machine disassembled and everything in place. The task at hand is to convert my Optimum MH28V manual milling machine to computer numeric control, CNC. There's a set of criteria that this machine must meet. A good, sturdy stand is a must for a benchtop CNC mill conversion like this. Mine will be made from 75mm square hollow section steel with 3mm thick walls all round. This should more than suffice. The stand is designed to accommodate chip and coolant management, which occupies the entirety of its inner space. The weldment and painting of this stand will be the subject of this video. The machine must be situated in a coolant compliant enclosure as the value of coolant can hardly be understated when machining aluminium and, depending on the circumstances, steel too. The use of coolant, although slightly misleading by its name, earns its place in machining for its ability to flush out chips in cavities, thus preventing the tool from recutting them, which can wreak havoc on tool life and surface finish on the workpiece. Coolant also lubricates and cools the tool, extending its working life, and it also keeps the part cool which may help stabilise dimensions of the part somewhat for measurement. This will be my first DIY machine with coolant of any kind, but I learned the value of it after working with $800,000 DMG Mario machines last year. Coolant is now a must, and likely an air blast feature too. The enclosure is designed to have spent coolant flow back towards the centre and fall down between the machine stand into a catchment tub. This tub is part of a stack of filtering and recirculation elements. The tub has a perforated bottom which allows coolant to flow through. Immediately below that is a secondary screen with finer perforations to capture the smaller chips which may fall through. This will also make it easier to clean out and manage the finer chips. Third is a large drip pan, kind of like a funnel. This will catch the coolant as it falls through and direct it towards the center and back towards the coolant storage tank. Assuming it all works, it'll require no electrical or mechanical assistance. I'll just be making a very risky bet that gravity will be sticking around. The upper part of the enclosure has been designed with filmmaking in mind, so I've given it an all clear polycarbonate front and top panel to get as much light in there as possible and hopefully give you guys a great view of the action every time. As well as that, the interior left, right and bottom panels will be white to maximise brightness while the back panels will be black to help the work stand out and hopefully offer some great rim lighting opportunities. I don't know if it'll work out like that, but we'll find out. I'll also be making provisions to attach lights and cameras to the inside because I want to do the best I can to give you guys great footage of the action. You may have also noticed that the enclosure is asymmetrical. The right side of the CNC conversion carries the stepper motor while the left doesn't so I don't need to leave as much space on the left to clear the stepper. The more compact the enclosure, the better, in my view. It's also a must that this machine achieves 5-axis capability. Making use of the harmonic drive units, the cross roller bearings and the stepper motors in the rotary head from my custom 5-axis CNC router that I built in 2015-2016, I'll be making a trunnion style setup for this project. If you haven't yet seen my video on the DIY 5-axis router that I built, I recommend that you check it out. It's received tons of positive feedback and it really helped my channel burst onto the scene here on YouTube. The trunnion must be capable of handling aluminium and hopefully also steel and I would like to affectionately name this machine, Pascal. Now let's get started on some actual work. I need to make some 16mm holes in steel plates where the feet will screw in, but I don't have a 16mm drill, so I'm going to have to try and manually interpolate some holes. Now I've actually got some new Tormac TTS um, tooling here. Got a chuck, 132nd to 3/8 inch, JT2, that's all right, and JT2 Arbor, JT2 Genuine Tormac. Now the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to twist that a little bit, make sure there's no grit in it, feels pretty good. 
press it on, and then there you go. Nice new drill chuck for the for the machine. Okay, let's get this on the machine and start drilling a hole in one of these plates. So first I have to spot drill, then drill it out to 13 millimeters. I don't have any bigger drills. After that, I will be manually interpolating a hole using a 12 mil end mill. Okay, and there we have it. That is my best attempt at doing a circular interp interpolation. It's not perfect, but I think it'll work. 16 mil, easy. And with those done, let's go down to the Gold Coast where my brother will weld up the rest. Okay, we've got the stand back from the Gold Coast. We wel welded it over the weekend, and now we pretty much need to sand it, prime it, paint it, and stick it right here. And then put the machine on it, and we're done. Now, oh, yep, yeah, okay, good, good train. I may or may not have forgotten to get a paint roller tray. So I'm gonna have to make do. Perfect. That's how a machinist paints. I'm not good at clicking my fingers. Anyway, excellent, primer is done. Uh, tomorrow I will be returning to this. It's late now, I need to make dinner. But that is what it looks like. Just primer, nothing special really. Uh, the whole thing will be coated in Mark Super Gray, hex code 1C1C1C. Okay, listen to how disgusting this sounds. Oh no. 
I was intending to get back at this hole on the other side here. So I drilled all the way through from the top and this is the underside. I was gonna use the hole saw to cut that out so I can fit the bolt head through and a socket and everything. But it doesn't reach. The drill hits this part. So, instead I think I'm going to just change to having the bolt head rest on here rather than being inside. But I'm gonna have to make a plate to distribute the force so it doesn't just crush the, the steel frame. I can't believe I thought that would work to be honest, but anyway. Now that we've got the stand in place, it's time to get the mill on top of the stand. And I can't lift this thing by hand. That rhymes, very good. And I don't have a crane to lift it. So I'm actually gonna just pull it apart into its separate castings and then eventually get the base on top of the stand. And I'll also be drilling the mounting holes to secure it to the base. And that might seem like, that might seem like a lot of work, but I need to pull it apart anyway for the CNC conversion. So I'm really just killing two birds with one stone. So you can watch me pull it apart now. To start, I've taken out these, these Gibbs screws. They go in right in here to hold. This is a gib, so that's what rubs up against the dovetail of the x-axis. And there's another one, I think there's another one on the other side, I haven't pulled it out yet. My mistake, it was actually just one piece and this piece is tapered. So the more it gets jammed in that way, the more it uh, wedges in and takes up the slack for the table. Anyway, I also had a lot of trouble, not a lot of trouble, but I was confused about how to get the end plate off. This goes on this way. And I wasn't really sure, it wasn't coming off easy. It's actually just a dowel pin. So you just need to kind of get a flathead screwdriver in there and, and then you start working it off. So that's a bit of useful information that I would have loved to know from the get-go. Okay, once again for the second time, I've taken the gib out this time so the head is real floppy loose on here. Still have no idea why this wouldn't separate from that. Ugh. It's easy, super light. So what you're looking at here is actually the inside of the Z-axis dovetail. This is not the side with the gear, this is the actual contact um, surface of the, the moving part of the Z-axis dovetail. And that's pretty, that's pretty rough. That's not gonna help with, uh, with rigidity. I can see that there's very little contact where it's actually been sliding. So I'm gonna try and do something about that. I don't know what, but I'm gonna try and do something about that. All right, these two holes don't line up super well. I don't think it's my fault. I think they've machined them poorly. But it might still, okay, good. Excellent. Wait. Excellent. Mm -hmm. 
Next time on the project, we're going to be looking at reconditioning the machine. So I've noticed that the saddle dovetail has a pretty poor contact. It has, it looks like it's been scraped and flaked, but it's just, it's not getting a lot of contact. I'm not sure if you can see the blue there. So I've never scraped anything before, but uh, how hard could it be, right? Also the column, I think has a, a tilt towards the operator. I think that's called nod. I can't really check it. I don't have a big square to check it, but I'm, I'm gonna have to think about that. So we're gonna be sorting that out next time. Scraping, checking, making things run smooth. Now feel free to leave a comment below to let me know if you want a longer video, if you want more nitty gritty detail, if, if, it's, um, if it's a bit boring. I need to figure that out and feedback is super helpful. You can also follow my Instagram, it's mark underscore super, easy to get to, and you'll get more frequent updates of little things that are happening behind the scenes and in the process.